Welcome back to the comic book ASM artist. Today we're going to be doing a video I've been wanting to do for a while. I'm sure you all have seen my um, Marvel Comics Encyclopedia video. I'll leave a link below as well. Why not? But uh, I've been wanting to do the DC Encyclopedia, but uh, the main reason I hadn't is because the last one that was printed was quite a while ago. So I had pre-ordered this, and this came in recently enough. We've had other videos to do with hauls and and things like that. But this right here, this spans up to um, dark metal, essentially. So we see the cover immediately. This is a nice Mikhail Yannon cover. And as I've said, even with the Marvel one, um, I collect comics. I know quite a bit, but um, I don't know everything. Um, so there's got to be a lot of obscure elements um, within this book. And that's kind of the fun of it anyway, is to see um, what new stuff you can see, kind of learn a little bit. This will no way be an exhaustive reading or anything. This will more or less kind of be an overview and encouragement for uh, you all to go uh, buy the book and experience it in a, um, you know, more um, concise version or I don't know. the word, That's not the right word there, but you know what I mean. It's better for you to sit down and read everything based upon your interests. So nice Jim Lee drawing here to open it with this little faux signature there. So first of all, we are greeted to the history of the DC Universe. So we see the different time periods here. And, you know, in collecting comics, I know I've always heard about, like, the Silver, Bronze, Golden Age. It was interesting they labeled the later ones here. So from 1984 to 1998 is the Dark Age, definitely punctuated by the Watchmen there. Um, we saw a lot of heroes go very dark between that and Frank Miller's take on Batman. From 1999 to 2010 is considered the modern age. And then they've lastly divided up the current period here, 2011 to 2015 slash through 2016 present is the prime age. So kind of interesting. And uh, interesting to see if, you know, they would actually adopt that in the in the actual comic book marketing word. Because we always hear about those first three. But the later stuff, we're like, well, I guess this is still modern age. But, you know, modern age has been going a long, long time. So, yeah, these books are, um, this book is alphabetical. So they try to get in as many, um, characters and things like that as they can. I know Marvel also included uh, events in theirs. So I'm not sure if this will or not. So, yeah, we get a nice full page here about the Amazons. And you'll notice, too, a lot of newer art uh, in this book as well. So it'll be nice to, you know, see that to bring a bit of modernity to it as well and what's nice too is you can go and you know if something interests you here like I still have all the best intentions to read Animal Man both the past stuff as well as the current stuff there's something very interesting that grabs me about uh, the art style of the Animal Man books the anti-monitor A little two-page spread here for Aquaman. I think it's funny that they've kind of went back and embraced um, the 90s kind of look here. Of an ex you know, minus the hook hand he had. But that's a look that was bashed for a bit and now it's coming back around. Adam gets a full page. I don't know much about the Adam, honestly. I was 
struggle to when the book is this large trying to you know get everything in frame as well as um you know trying to read even from here my vision is not great unless it's literally like right in front of my face that i have difficulty reading and stuff and this font is super small so I love this image of uh, Azrael that they've used up here. I don't think I've ever seen him in this white suit like this. You know, he's normally seen in the red suit. So that's kind of interesting. You see a full page here on Bane. This nice uh, David Finch drawing of him from a more recent issue. This might have been issue 75 or somewhere about there this might have been the issue when he broke um alfred's neck maybe it's somewhere close to that i know but i love how bane is kind of you know cemented himself in the rogues gallery people paint a lot of things in the 90s but it certainly seems like between bane and azrael they've always find a way to maintain their importance in the Batman mythos. Two page spread on Batgirl, that's pretty cool. I always see the stuff here with um, the Batgirl of Burnside. I always, I've never read those. I'm not sure if that's considered like the same um, continuity as everything else. I always kind of thought that that was like a new 52, although it wasn't, I guess, huh? But it always just kind of seemed like this Batgirl was outside of, like, the Barbara Gordon we've read previously in the comics. I don't know. That's just how I felt about it anyway. And we see the Batman section here. Just some newer Batman art. And the kid gets carried over. He gets four full pages here, so... Pretty nice. And even, oh, is this, I think this might even be, yeah, this is from Joker War. So, yeah, they really do have um, pretty current stuff in here. Batman Beyond. I watch all the shows, but I've never read any of the comics. I definitely feel like that is something that I um, need to get up on. And we have the Batman who laughs. He certainly seems to be pushing his way to relevance between metal and everything like that. And I think it would be interesting to see, like, in maybe five or ten years, if he's still um, as much of a threat as he is currently. I know a lot of his stuff had to do with kind of Scott Snyder. Um, putting his spin on the DC universe. So I think it'll be interesting to see if that hold maintains or not. Let's see like here, who is uh, Andrew Bennett? It says here he's some sort of vampire. So yeah, I don't, I don't know who that is. He's got a pretty significant blurb though. <laughs> Bibbo's just got a tiny thing here. I always liked Bibbo just because of, you know, how much they wrote him up in the uh, 90s. Big Barda here. Bizarro. Black Adam is one that always interests me too. I know that he's a huge threat, but, you know, another one I don't know too much about. Black Lightning and Black Manta here. Let's see the Blue Beetle. Looks like we get two pages here, but two different Blue Beetles. I don't know much about Jamie Ray's. I know that he was, um, whenever they did um, the New 52 stuff, this was the Blue Beetle. 
And they brought back Ted Cord, the original Blue Beetle. I remember he got killed in this particular thing here. The um, I'm trying to remember the name of this particular book, but I think it was like only a, a penny book in the comic shop. And I, I was like, I can't believe this is a penny because it had this um, Jim Lee cover that was drawn by him, obviously, and then uh, painted by Alex Ross. And I was like, this is only a penny book. And then they killed Blue Beetle. And I was like, what the crap? Why would they do that in, you know, a one cent comic book? Or maybe it was 10 cents. It was some sort of weird promotional thing. But And Booster Gold. I'm glad that they're teaming back up the original team together. The DC Universe here. This is Brainiac. Captain Adam is always a huge threat, it seems, in the DC world, uh, just because he has the potential to cause so much destruction. He said if you actually pierce him, like it creates an atom bomb or something to that extent. And I think they've worked that angle a few times. Some more rogues gallery here, Captain Boomerang and Captain Cold really considered more like Flash villains than any other hero's threat, I would say. You see some Catwoman stuff here. All through the ages. Don't know anything about Cersei here. It looks like she's a Wonder Woman villain. Same here, Cheetah. I'm glad that the DC Comics have adopted kind of like the Batman animated Clayface look here, where he's more monster than human in the face. There was for the longest time they gave him a more human face. Uh, he's still not known as Matt Hagen like he is in the animated stuff, but you know, at least the visual look of him matches what a lot of us have grown up on now. He's a comedian there. A watchman inserted in here. Cosmic Boy, don't know anything about him. I would say the Court of Owls is certainly one of the most exciting and important things to happen to Batman in the recent, I guess it's been a decade now, as crazy as that is. Anytime they show up, there's always just a bit of urgency in the story all of a sudden, just because there's so much history rooted in their threat, you know. There's a crime syndicate here. Cyborg getting two pages. Awesome. I really feel they should use him a lot more. He has the potential to be one of the biggest heroes for DC, I would say. Especially if they want to push, you know, marketing more African American books and things like that. He's the perfect hero to do it with. You know, he is such a powerful character. Visually, he's very cool to look at. Um, you know, I think he just fits. I really wish they would push him more. Cyborg Superman, of course, you guys know my nostalgia for him. There's something about those 90s books. Like I said, a lot of people deadpan them, but I absolutely love them. They are what inspired me and enthralled me to keep collecting. Dark side, getting some pages here. Easily the biggest threat in the DC universe. Surprised Dead Man gets a full page. I would say he's a more obscure hero, but uh, he certainly seems to um, 
to have a sort of gravitas about him. Deathstroke, another one I always hear. He's like the main villain who can literally go best hand-to-hand uh, -hand against Batman and possibly even win on occasion. I'm surprised they've got him listed under the demon and not Etrican. Maybe they'll have the human form of him under Etrican. Detective Chimp, he's been seen a lot more with Snyder's stuff. Don't know much about Dr. Fate, but um, he's probably one of the most powerful heroes, I would imagine. Just from the little bits of him I, I have seen. I don't know if he's had like a recent um, ongoing book or any sort of spotlight on him. But I think that would be kind of an interesting thing, especially if they got like a solid writer and artist together on it. Doom Patrol, very quirky uh, group of heroes or anti-heroes or whatever you want to call them. I think they should really do more with them. The, um, the show has been doing so well that it just makes sense to put some more light on the book too. Doomsday, of course. What a incredible, incredible villain. Um, he did what no one else could do in the DC universe. He killed Superman. Granted, Superman came back, but still, what an incredible, memorable thing, you know. Visually very jarring, very striking. And then when you read his backstory of basically, like, um, he's a creature that just adapts to survival so they would keep... Um, throwing threats at him that would kill him and then he would come back stronger and stronger and stronger just what an interesting angle uh, Eclipso I remember seeing him being a pretty big threat um, 80s wise I want to say um, he'd be a fun one to break back out and delve into you. Elongated Man, I think the last time I read anything really focused on him was the Brad Meltzer book from a while back. I'm trying to remember the name of it. I'm sure you guys know it, but I'm blanking on it at the minute here. This is like Let's see, this is a Gen 13 character here, I believe. Uh, visually, I recognize the character. I never really read much of that series, though. So I'm seeing if that is who it is. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, right here. I like to pick those up. I don't think there's a whole ton of them out there. Oh, well, we already passed the E, so I guess they didn't mention the demon as Etric in there. Or if they did, we missed it. No. No, no. I'm going to backtrack. Pardon me a minute. No, he wasn't in there. Firestorm. Visually cool character. I don't know much about him. But he looks cool. The Flash is a hero that a lot of you love. A lot of my viewers love The Flash. Um... I definitely feel like I would read and enjoy it as well. As you know, I just juggle so many books, but I don't know, maybe 
maybe down below recommend the best flash stories for me i love impulse you know from young justice I know there's always like a handful of Flash books, but it seems like Flash is kind of like the pulse of the DC universe, you know, he with him running through timelines and all that sort of stuff. It's really him who kind of keeps it in balance. Guy Gardner. Character was certainly a punching bag in the nineties, I felt. They had an obnoxious ball haircut and everything. This is a cool picture of Zod here. Superman's greatest, I'd say one of his greatest foes. It's so funny, you know, that Superman has more threats with Lex than he does with Zod, when Zod is definitely literally more on his playing field considering powers and stuff like that yeah, both the Gordons here junior and senior Magog I'm surprised he doesn't have more about him huge threat in the kingdom come book gorilla Grodd big flash villain probably one of his top five biggest threats I would say based upon what I've seen like I said I haven't read a lot but he's certainly recognizable green arrow I don't know a lot about green arrow um, I'd say he's kind of like I don't know, he works in some very gray areas. Oh, we see Green Lantern here as well. Green Lantern is another one, you know, he's a he's a big important DC character, but I haven't read a lot of his stuff. So if you have, if you're a big Green Lantern fan, tell me below what are uh, some of the best arcs to read. It's so funny when I see the Kyle Rayner Green Lantern. I definitely love Hal Jordan Moore, but you know this was this was right in that period, you know, '90s when they brought him out, and it certainly is a level of nostalgia whenever I see him because he was in quite a bit of the DC books at that time. I don't know if he was a particularly like, um, I don't know, um, capable Green Lantern. I know now, I think his status, he's like a white lantern or something, if I remember. Let's see, Harley Quinn here. I think Harley Quinn's rise is probably one of the most impressive things um, to happen in the DC Universe. A little bit of not just the people who've been super long-time readers, for sure, I would say. Just because her her rise just kind of... She's everywhere now, you know. But she was literally just, you know, Joker's side character initially on a cartoon show. Granted, one of the best cartoon shows. Uh, but they just kind of catapulted her into the spotlight. And now she's... Um probably one of the most recognizable DC characters, you know, aside from the main, main ones, but she's like, if you told people to name 10 DC characters, she'd probably be on that list. Uh, Hawk and Dove, the Hawk girl here. So, yeah, I know um, Hawk and Dove mainly just from whenever uh, Liefeld worked on them for a period. I think it was his first comic book work, if I remember correctly. Um, I'd be interested to pick those up and read those just because I like his art style. I know absolutely nothing about Hawk Girl, but I love like Hawk, Hawk Man and Hawk Girl's style, just the visual look of them. Um, the huge wings and the, the masks and everything. 
I think they're probably pretty powerful heroes. But don't see much about them really. A little blurb on Jonah Hex here. Hush here. One of the more popular modern Batman stories. Which I guess now is almost 10 years old. Which is crazy. Or is it 10 years old? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no it is. It's over that because it came out like 2004 or something like that. Maybe 2005. I'm trying to see if they have the date anywhere here. But that's so crazy. I'm surprised Huntress has a full page. And this, I don't even know, really know who this is, other than, you know, I saw her briefly in the Death of Superman story. But yeah, I'm surprised she's got a full blurb like that. Impulse. I love this image of him here. I need to find this cover. This was from the more recent Young Justice relaunch. Which certainly was not as good as the original. But what can you do? Jericho. I think he's the first deaf superhero. I'm kind of bummed that they relegated him now when he communicates. He just does through like text messaging before back in the day. They would actually make the effort to have him do sign language on the panels. Which was, you know, you kind of get a lot communicated, but it was cool for them to kind of see that. And if you're a deaf person reading that, to be like, hey, he's signing just like me, you know. Certainly wish they would have continued in that vein with them. See Joker getting a nice two page spread here. Maybe he'll have more. Let me turn the page. Ah, uh, no. I think I forgot that this is supposed to be Jor-El. Didn't they just bring him back kind of more recently with where he took Jonathan from Superman and everything? I guess they did. It's just so weird. I don't know. <laughs> and they kind of made him a bit insane, too. So, yeah, but I guess that's his dad. But you think that him in... Clark or kal would be closer than they are. I don't know. It's very weird. You know, they try to do something shocking and it's just strange, especially how they made him out to be how he was. Definitely more, he seemed more evil than good. At least if I am remembering it right or not. See Justice League through the ages here in different regions. I even know they had a well, I guess I did um, just from the uh, Superman there. Old school here, the JSA. They were the first superhero team ever, I think. The Kents, they gotta combine them. That's interesting that Killer Croc gets a full page here. He's certainly a, a lesser utilized villain. King Shark, I have a feeling, is about to get a lot more popular after Suicide Squad finally watched it. I was thoroughly entertained and amused by it, so good job there. 
Lady Shiva, huh? She gets a full page. Um, kind of surprising once again. So I remember her briefly um, with some interactions with Batman, but not much I know about her. Lois getting two pages. That's good. The Legion of Superheroes. The Legion has been a fan favorite for a while. It's never really grabbed me, but uh, for a lot of people, this was kind of like their their teen book really i guess from you know their early days with superboy and all that sort of stuff so i think how they feel about the legion is probably how i feel about young justice you know if you're reading uh something where it's like teens reading about teens there's just there's just something about that connection leviathan definitely a very jarry jarring and scary Batman storyline, one of the most brutal things I've read in recent Batman time. Chris Burnham just added such a level of uh, urgency and violence to that story. Lobo here. Be interesting to see if they do more with Lobo. They're kind of pushing him, pushing him back out again, and using him more. I'd like to see him be used more for sure. Lex Luthor here, as he considered one of the top five, the most important villains in the DC universe, probably. Which is crazy, like he's he's a mad rich genius. But yeah, he, he maintains his hold. He's human, but I don't know. I don't know how he does it honestly. I guess when your enemy is, you know, one of the most powerful heroes, Superman, you get noticed. There, here we go. Here's some stuff with Magog. So I guess that's more in line with Kingdom Come as well. Maybe they were two separate things. I thought Gog was Magog, just a like further developed version of him. So I'll have to go back and touch on that. Man Bat. Martian Manhunter. I'd like to see him get some more um, attention. Metallo. I've always loved Metallo. There's just something about big evil robots and then the unique element of the kryptonite heart in him and I just love when George Perez would draw him all the intricate wires and the line work he put on him surprise Mixia's Pitlick is not doesn't have more of a write up about him he's probably one of the least talked about but most powerful villains he just has the potential to do so much damage, you know. This is a great image here of Mr. Miracle. He's another character that I would love to see uh, more attention placed on. He's just really unique and interesting. And, you know, I, I just think that they should do more with him. And I think they might, honestly. But only time will tell. Mongol is one who 
is making a threat recently in Superman. I'm glad to see him come back. He was kind of linked in with that whole uh, Reign of Superman storyline, so that was always a big um, thing that makes me excited when I see him, which technically Superman is supposed to have killed him with his heat vision in that. And then this right here, this is considered um, one of the greatest Alan Moore stories here that he had done with Superman. This is a Superman annual here. Um, I think this is number seven, maybe. I can't remember. I'm sure one of you will have an idea down below, maybe. But yeah, I know that cover there, but I would love to read that again. It's been a long, long time, but it's considered like one of those best Superman stories, and it's just contained within that annual. Mr. Freeze here. He's a very interesting villain. Visually, he's very fun to look at, especially the modern one with the red goggles and all that sort of stuff. There's the new Superman there. I think he's Korean, if I remember. No, he's from China. My mistake. New Gods. Kirby's masterwork for DC. Definitely one of the most important stories, series, I don't know what you want to consider it as. But yeah, it's always nice to add a, a big, huge cosmic threat into a comic book universe. Nightwing here, he gets two pages, good for him. He is a very important character he's kind of he's kind of that link with the fans once again it goes back to just kind of seeing him grow you know from robin's from robin from being batman's sidekick to being his own hero and you know using his best judgment and stuff it's always interesting to follow his adventures orion same thing linked with the uh, new gods and all that stuff. And I just they need to do something big with that whole uh, pocket of DC. A big sprawling epic. I would love to see that. Parasite. I mainly know Parasite from the Superman animated episode. He kidnaps him and just keeps sucking his energy from him. He's fun to look at, though. A little weird. Penguin. Alfred gets a page here, I would hope. You know. I wonder if they're going to end up bringing him back after everything that's happened. Poison Ivy. Great Batman villains. Uh, let's see. I was about to say, is Professor Pig in here? Uh, he's over here, yeah. He's one they've been using a lot more. Let's see, we got Punchline in here. I love it. I love how they just updated this. Really nice. Ah, oh, is Renee Montoya the new question? I had no idea. Interesting. I'll have to read that and see what that's all about. I know she obviously wasn't the original question. Rachel Ghoul. 
was recently made him not as evil in the Robin book that came out. It's like retraining him for a little bit. Raven is certainly one of the most powerful DC characters as well. Just kind of underutilized. Red Hood is coming back up in popularity just because of the edge that he has with his newer costume design as well here. Red Lantern Core, a newer kind of threat in the Green Lantern universe. Although it's been a while now, but you know. Reverse Flash. Riddler. It's the Kelly Gannon cover there. Some Robin is this gonna cover all the Robins? Possibly. I know we see Damien here. This looks like this is all Damien. We're not gonna mention Tim Drake. Ah, oh, there we go. Well, he's not even going by Red Robin anymore, I don't think. So he's going for as Drake for a very brief period, too. rogues I think this is more or less considered like the Flash's villain team here Royal Flesh Gang don't know much about them I was introduced to them through Batman Beyond through that episode Smaller characters here. Scarecrow. We have the first Green Lantern. Secret Society of Supervillains. A pretty large group. Shazam. I think they're trying to push him out, and then I don't know. He's got the he's got his new movie coming out in a little bit, but and it did okay, but I don't know if it did the best that I was supposed to. Sinestro, to my understanding, the most powerful Green Lantern villain. Well, he might be on his side currently, I don't know. Hard to say. Solomon Grundy been used a lot more recently. Always fun to have a big, huge, kind of brainless menace to throw into a story to wreck things. Nice starfire image there. Starro, I have a feeling he'll be more popular after the Suicide Squad movie. The Steel here, John Henry Irons. I'm surprised they didn't use the big old John Bogdanov image. We do have a small one here of him fighting Superboy. But I wish they would have put one there because this is okay, but I like him better in his traditional style there. But of course I have bias that way, don't I? John Stewart, he's a more popular Green Lantern, I would say. Quite a few people really like him. I think he was um, heavily used in the Justice League cartoon. I actually haven't watched a lot of that one, so... But I think that's where a lot of people's 
love comes from who are around my age anyway. You see a lot more uh, obscure characters here. Here we've got the Suicide Squad. Looks like the focus here is more on the current team than the traditional team. We see Superman's son, Superboy, and then we see Connell, Superboy. Once again, I wish we had a nice Tom Grummet drawing of him there, which is not even any of the side ones. Oh well. But yeah, he was a fun. 90s creation for sure. Supergirl. A lot of stuff going on with her. I feel like they're certainly boosting her character up a lot more. Superman. Doing his thing. Ah, here we go. I love it. One of my favorite images of Superman right here. John Burns. Uh, Superman miniseries was just fantastic. One of the most impactful things in my life. One of my earliest things I ever saw in comics. Reading that over my brother's shoulder. Swamp Thing. Talia, the Talons, Talon. All are pretty huge threats, although with the recent stuff with the, um, I'm blanking on it now. Like all of the secret organizations were destroyed. Was it, was it just called Lazarus? No, maybe it was just Leviathan, maybe. I don't remember. But yeah, basically all of like the inner working underworld companies were shaken up. So she's still powerful, but she's kind of clawing back up to power. There's John Boy Myers Teen Titans image there, which such a bummer he was only did a few issues and then not on the book anymore. The toy man. I guess he's more like an actual toy looking now than a uh, human like he was before. Trickster, I'm pretty sure he's a, a pretty... I, can, I don't know, I guess bigger but not a super huge flash thread but I know he's you know one of his rogues gallery type characters I like how pretty much all of Batman's villains get a full page in this book probably a little biased there as well huh? unknown soldier I don't know much about him, but this image there looks really cool. Let me see. Wave Rider. He's created by Dan Jurgens. He's a pretty cool character. Watchmen. Wally West. A lot of people's favorite Flash. And that's funny that they used a I've only just remembered seeing him in a more recent Batman book. But he gets a big old space. I think it's just because that image looks so cool. Let's see Wonder Woman here. Nice image of her. Definitely one of the most powerful and prominent people 
meat whore. Well, she's a god, I guess. So, do you know what I mean? One of those powerful heroes, the DC universe. A young justice. See some of the Todd Knock ones there. They should have had his art here, that one switched him. Because the reason why anyone's even talking about Young Justice was from Todd Knock and Peter David's run. Not the recent attempt. And then this is just kind of other people they missed maybe. Or just kind of side even more obscure, like they couldn't even fit a full. I'm seeing if they've got a tricken back here. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like they do. This is weird. Oh well. Yep, so all these last pages are all super concise footnotes for characters that were not enough to write a huge paragraph about. And then there's our index, so this will help you nail down where to find your favorite or most obscure character. So, yeah. Alright, well that's it. As always, let me know what you want to see down below. Like, comment, subscribe. Help us get to our 2,000 subscriber giveaway. We're giving away ENIAC number one for printing. And a signed X-Men Legends by um, the Simonsons. And uh, as always, you all have a super slumber. Thanks. Bye.